Hi there, I'm Kevin from Buffer. I'm excited to share some tips with you today about how to create social media reports based on your social media data. So I'm here at my Buffer queue and I'm going to click over into the Analytics tab. And within Analytics, you can export both from this page here and also over on the Analysis tab, you can export down here as well. And what you end up exporting is whatever date and time range you have set here. So it's currently set to 30 days. You can do it 90 days, 7 days, yesterday, today. Also set up a custom time frame as well if you want to search for just a specific date range. If you had a campaign running or have different quarterly setups, you can do a custom date range here too. I'm going to go ahead and leave it at 30 days and click the export button and that downloaded there. And it downloaded as a CSV file, which is kind of a generic data and numbers sort of file. And kind of the best way I found to analyze that data is to add it into a spreadsheet. So over here I have my Google Drive. It would also work great to bring it into Excel also. And with Google Drive, I'll go ahead and create a new Google Sheet. And with the Google Sheet, I will go up to File and import, and I want to upload this export that I just grabbed, so I'm going to click here to select it. There it is. And as Google Drive analyzes that, it's going to let me choose where to place it. You can create a new spreadsheet with the import. I'm going to go ahead and replace the data starting at the selected cell, and that will put it right there for me. So cool, a couple of things I do once I'm in here, I'll expand this row so I can see the content, a bit more of the content of the tweets themselves. I'll freeze these first two rows here. So that I can kind of see the, the have these as the headings and the numbers below. And once those are frozen, I can then go ahead and sort these columns pretty easily too. So if, for instance, with retweets, I can sort by most to least and see which tweet got the most retweets in the last 30 days for me. And another cool thing I like to do with this data is to find the average and the mean to the different numbers here. So for retweets, for instance, in this bottom cell, I'm going to go ahead and put equals, average, and I'm going to select all these rows here. There's the average. Go ahead and change the number format so it's something a little cleaner. There we go. So I averaged 3.32 retweets per tweet in the last 30 days. And I can drag this over to each of the next columns to get a good number for all of them. And one thing I like to do here, I see that I have 22 clicks on average for an average tweet. So what I'd love to know is like which ones exceeded that number. So I can select all this here, go up to Format, and Conditional Formatting, and it says within this range, if a cell is not empty, I'm going to change this to if a cell is greater than, and our average was 22, that's going to change the color to green, click Done. Now when I look at the list here, I can see the ones that stand out, just like that. I'll go ahead and reorder by date and time. So this is starting at the first of the 30 days all the way until today. And it looks like I had a pretty good stretch here um, on October 5th, 6th, and 7th with lots of good tweets there. Um, a couple more through here and then not as many recently, which is totally fine. So that's one cool way I like to find out that. Um, what numbers we have here are retweets, favorites, mentions, and clicks. What I might also do is insert another column and do total engagement. And one way that I define total engagement is just the sum of all these four different metrics. So the sum of retweets, favorites, mentions, and clicks. I think the formatting carried over here, so 
take off the formatting for now. But once you have that, you can drag that all the way down. And I'll make the average here as well. And there we go. So we have the total engagement column. We have all the averages at the bottom. If you ever want to find, for instance, the median instead of the average, the median is going to look for the middle value in this set of values. That can sometimes be another accurate representation of kind of where the middle is. Um, that also accounts for outliers in, in a way that an outlier like, for instance, this 100 number doesn't necessarily change the clicks average or me median as much as it does if you were to look at the average. So average clicks is 22, the median clicks is 18 and then also a bit lower on engagement also. But that's a couple different ways of looking at that. Average, median, adding total engagement to this column, setting up these average and medians as benchmarks so you can kind of see which posts exceeded your benchmark. And I'm sure tons of other different formulas and tools that um, you all might be great at knowing and I'm just kind of scratching the surface here. But hope these tips were helpful. We also have a cool social media report card that I'd love to share with you. Um, it can also support an, an export from Buffer and then creates this cool graphs and charts of data from the last 30 days. So we'd love to have you get some access to that. There's a link in the email for this, and we also have it online in our blog post on social media reports. And excited to hear what you all think. Feel free to tweet us at Buffer or email us at hello at buffer.com, and we'll look forward to hearing from you soon. Thanks.